Okay, uh, I'm just going to go through the calculator questions in algebra quiz number four, which I have on the left hand side of the screen here. So here we go. Use Pascal's triangle to expand the following expressions and you've got them here. Now, truth be told, you can't, if you're given this problem in a, an exam or a test, they're usually worth more than one mark. And one of the marks is uh, attributed to simply doing the Pascal's triangle expansion, you know, going one, 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 two, one, one, three, three, one, one, four, six, four, one, and then writing it out. That would be worth one mark. And then the second mark would be for um, doing the final answer, I suppose. So you would still need to write it out, but then you can go to the final answer, um, which is just an expansion, right? So I can go to menu, I can go to algebra, I can then go to expand. You could also just type in the word expand. And then remember you need inside brackets as well, 2x plus 1. Then you can use this to 4 to the power of, and then you type in 4, press the um, arrow button to get to the end of it, close the bracket, and press return. Technically, you don't have to close the bracket, really. It'll do it for you if you don't put that last bracket in. The rest of it you need to do, though. And there we have it, 16x to the power of 4, all the way down to 1. Okay, next thing is 3 minus y or cubed, minus 2y, sorry. Um, so I'm going to type it in this time, expand, and then in brackets, I'm going to go 3 minus 2y, close brackets, and cube. And I'm not going to use, I'm not going to put in that final bracket this time, and you'll see it does it for me. Note the way it writes it out though, minus 8y cubed plus 36y squared minus 54y plus 27. So even though the y term was the second, term, it always tries to write it in terms of descending powers of whatever the variable is. So it's kind of rewritten this as minus 2y plus 3, and then that would be the expansion of that. It's technically correct, but just be mindful that what you see here is not what a natural expansion of this would look like. Um, by the way, so if you completely forget Pascal's triangle, and it is in the calculator section, you very well could just write these answers down. You won't get full marks, but some marks are better than no marks, right? Okay, question four is a solve. So it's not just an expand, but solve. Now these should be easy enough to do without a calculator, really. That's x equals minus four, x equals seven. That's x equals five over three and x equals three. But you can at least confirm your answers um, if you want to. Um, and we'll go to algebra, menu, algebra, and then this time solve. And I'll put in the factors just as they are. So x plus four, x minus seven equals zero whoops equals zero but then you need to tell the tell the calculator even though it's really obvious what variable variable you're trying to solve for so in this case it's x so you use a comma as you can see it's down here and then put the variable x in close the bracket and return and you can see x equals minus four x equals seven the next one is a little bit more trickier i'm, I'm going to type in solve this time put my brackets in three x minus, oh, it's not that tricky, but I'm just saying, three minus x, there's a couple of things to try and trip you up. Press return, oops, what did I do? Oh, didn't finish it, like a doofus. Equals zero, comma, x, return. And there we go, x equals five thirds, or x equals three. So there's your answers there. Um, probably a slightly um, more useful time to use your calculator would be if it was like 3x minus 5, 3 minus x equals 5 or something other than 0 because then you don't have to, um, if you're doing this by hand, you'd have to expand everything, um, take the 5 over to the left-hand side, come up with a new expression and solve for it, whereas the calculator, you can just plug it in straight away and go for it. So it's kind of useful from that perspective. Okay, number 5 is solve using completing the square method, giving your answers in simplest exact form. So there's a couple of things to trip you up here. But um, the good news is, is that the calculator does have a complete the squares um, function, but it might not be exactly what you're used to. So let's have a look at this one. We go to menu, we go to algebra, and you can see there's complete the square there, option five. So complete square is the text, and then you are going to type it in just exactly as it is. X squared minus eight X minus two equals zero. I can't remember whether I have to put comma x or not. So let's just try it without and see what happens. Nope. So comma, oops, comma x, close bracket. And there you've got x minus four square, all squared equals 18. 
that's not quite in the format that we would normally have it. We would normally have it as x minus 4 all squared plus or minus something equals 0. So you just got to take away 18 from both sides, and that would be the completing the square. So that's pretty good that it gives it to you, because you can effectively go from this to this. Um, there's no uh, extra working out to show. And then you need to solve it. It does say solve. So um, you on paper, you'd probably square root both sides. And so you'd go x minus 4, you'd write down, and then square root of 18, pre-root 2. So it simplified it for you. Um, and then you, because it says exact form. Sorry, I'll just explain things as I go along. I apologize, it's a bit rambly. Simplest exact form means that there's, you know, like if you take the square root of two, you'll get a decimal number that goes on forever. So exact form means root two or root 18. That's exact form because you haven't had to approximate it to a decimal. If, um, if you want it in simplest exact form, then 18, square root of 18 would have to be um, written as three root two. That's the simplest form. And there's a video, if you remember, on Google Classroom, which shows how to simplify thirds um, if you don't know how to do that. So there's 3 root 2. And then you can see I'd have x minus 4 on the left-hand side. So you'd add 4 to both sides. And so it would be 4 plus or minus 3 root 2. I think, I'm going to try it now, but as you see me do this, it's as I'm trying it myself. I think if you solve this, it might give it to you in the exact form as well, but I'm not sure. x squared minus 8x minus 2 equals 0 with respect to x. Um, yeah, so you've got negative, yeah, it gives it to you in a weird way, but you've got 3 root 2, um, uh, negative 3 root 2 plus 4, or 3 root 2 plus 4. So, four plus, so it's basically 4 plus 3 root 2 and 4 minus 3 root 2. But you can see you have to interpret what the calculator is outputting. So it will kind of give it to you. The reason why it's giving it to me in exact values, by the way, if I click on the little battery icon up here and go to document settings, and this is my default document settings as well, you can see that I've got calculation mode on auto, which means that it will give me exact when it can and decimal if it thinks it's better. If I click on this, you can see there are two options here. So if you're only getting decimals out, you might want to change it to approximate. I would either leave it approximate. I would either leave it as auto or exact because um, I'll show you, you can, if you leave it as exact, even if you leave it as exact, there is a little button here, which is these little squiggly equal signs, which will approximate an answer anyway. So I think if I do it now, you should be able to see that. There we go. So control enter does the squiggly equal signs, which means approximately equal to, and there's the two um, approximate decimals negative 0.242 and 8.242. Okay, so um, I'll do the uh, next one as well. I'll just type it in this time, complete square. Notice how it goes from italic to um, non-italics when you put in a function it recognizes. Um, 4x squared um, plus 20x minus 6 equals 0, comma, x, close bracket, Oops, so if I've done that, I put an, uh, an equals instead of a minus there. And there we've got 4 outside of x plus 5 on 2 all squared equals 31. So subtract 31 from both sides and you get the completing the square um, as it should be. So that's basically it. Now, realistically, um, if this was worth, say, um, 2 marks, then you could write that answer down, maybe with a minus 31 equals 0 instead as your first step and then solve it uh, for your second step and there's your two marks. If it was worth three marks, then it, then you might need to show some sense of how you worked out the completing the squares, you know, by taking out a common factor of four for the two, first two terms, like I've shown you before. Something which shows that you know how to do it um, realistically. Um, or even just the first step where, can you see how the, all three here are even numbers? Dividing through by two would give you two x squared plus uh, 10x minus 3 equals 0, and then solve that. That would have been a sensible way of doing it as well. Um, and then and then if you used your calculator, you'd go complete square 2x squared plus 10x minus 3 equals 0 with respect to x, and you'd get that as your overall answer, which is not quite as tidy with a fraction involved, but nevertheless, there you go.
Um, you can see that it does deal with fractions quite much more handily than we do as, as human beings. Okay, last one is solve using the quadratic formula. So the bad news is I don't believe there is any particular built-in function for the quadratic formula. Not that it really needs it. What you need to be able to do is, um, I'll just hide that message. What you need to, whoops, Daisy, sorry about that. Switch back to my calculator. Um, what you need to be able to do is effectively write down the formula x equals negative b plus or minus b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Substitute the values in, so 1, minus 18 and 9 for this one, minus 5, 2 and 3 for this one. And then you could use your calculator to do it. So you could go negative 1, negative 1, whoops, sorry, I'll try that again. Wrong negative, negative, oh man, sorry, negative 1, plus the square root of b squared. So that's going to be, oh, I've stuffed it up already, haven't I? Let's try that again. M negative b, so that's 18, put it in brackets, you'll see one a second, plus or minus, I can't do both at once, so I'll just do plus the square root of b squared, so negative 18 squared minus 4 times a, which is 1, times C, which is 9, all over, and this is why I've got brackets, so I close the square root, all over, which is why I put the square root instead, divided by 2A, and put that in brackets as well, 2 times 1, I reckon you could have done 2 times 1 in your head, and that'll give you one of them, 3 times 2 root 2 or plus 3, or you could say 6 root 2 plus 9, and then you could do the same thing by going up, to here and then pressing enter and then using your arrow key to go back into the problem and then go delete and go minus where's the minus step and then press enter and that'll give you the other one which is unsurprisingly basically the same but with a negative there and there that would be your answer you could also just use your calculator in a pretty basic way just to work out this bit here in, in bits and stuff. So you could do that as well. But effectively, what I would do in practice is I would go, um, I would write it down, x equals negative, negative 18. So 18 plus or minus the square root of 18 squared minus 4 times 1 times 9 all over 2 times 1. I'd write that and then I'd go which equals. And then I would probably go to my calculator and I would go solve x squared minus 18x. It's a bit silly, isn't it, really? I mean, I've got the quadratic formula to use, and then I go use my calculator to ignore the quadratic formula. Um, so I do that, and of course I get those two answers as well. 3 times 2 root 2 minus 3, 3 times 2 root 2 plus 3, and I'd write those down. Or um, if I was being a bit clever, I might write um, uh, 2 root 2 plus or minus 3. Something like that. Oh, sorry, 3, bigger pun. 3 plus or minus 2 root 2 um, because there's a negative outside. Something like that. I think it should have been 9, not 3. But you get the idea. So um, it's kind of up to you um, how you want to, what makes sense to you. Using the solve function when it says using the quadratic formula is a bit of a cheat in a way. Not, not, not a cheat as in a big C cheat like you'll get in trouble, but just kind of like, you know, you've asked me to show to solve using the quadratic formula. I've shown you that I can use the quadratic formula using x equals negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. And then my calculator just shortcuts the actual tedious calculation bit to give me the answers straight up. So um, it is a, um, a little bit of a cheaty shortcut in a way, but I think it's probably worth doing um, to save time. And you're less likely to make these sort of calculation errors in here. Of course, if this was in um, paper one, sorry, the um, non-calculator section, then these numbers would be a lot easier and you would have to use the quadratic formula um, yourself. So that could be, so you, you definitely do need to know how to use the quadratic formula and make sure that you do. Okay, I'll leave that video here. Um, if anything here doesn't make sense, or you want me to go through it with you in person, please do not hesitate to ask.